All right, Brandon, what are we looking at here? All right, so this is uh, this is the XBAT and the LRV, which is the launch recovery vehicle uh, for the XBAT. It's actually a scaled model, believe it or not. This is only two thirds the actual size to get no it kidding. into trade shows and events. We are limited in terms of like the actual size, but um, yeah, this is uh, the aircraft that we are building uh, currently. So. Um, but yeah, this is our, our, our model that we take to events, help people understand uh, what we're building, the capabilities, and you know, gives, gives them something visually to look at. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't know, it's, this is actually my first time seeing it physically. <laughs> I've only seen it uh, in the photos from our team. And no, it's, uh, like I, I've told you, I've been doing this now for 10 years. You get, it's hard, hard work, right? But. I think this is, like I get inspired by this thing. Like I, I'm fired up to build this thing. I'm fired up to make it a reality for the warfighter. I think the capability is, it is absolutely strategic. It's gonna make a, a huge impact. And it's like, who, who gets to work at the intersection of AI pilots and, and fighter aircraft and actually build an AI piloted fighter aircraft that is, doesn't require a runway. So it's cool. Not, not very many people. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so, 2100 nautical mile radius with mission payload with yeah mission payload so basically this thing can carry the same thing uh same amount of payload as an f-18 f-35 um it's carrying four Am amrams uh internal uh, it's got What's two uh a medium range air-to-air -air missile um so uh at the same so Multi-role, it can be for air-to-air -air missions, air-to-ground missions, air-to-surface missions. It can be used for electronic warfare missions. Um, it is, yeah, it's an incredible aircraft. Yeah, it looks like I, yeah, it. Yeah, I'm happy to walk around, tell you all about it. But Let's do it. All right. Let's do it. So one of the cool things, um, we're actually using um, the F-100 engine uh, is the engine that is used in F-15s, F-16s. One of the really cool aspects about it um, is it is a, it's a multi-plane thrust vectoring engine, uh, which is also the only U.S. airplane, U.S. jet in existence that has multi-plane thrust vectoring. So the F-22 uses 2D plane thrust vectoring. Um, I want to say it's the Russians have this so the Russians or Chinese have an aircraft that has multi-plane thrust vectoring, but basically what that enables is um, increased maneuverability, some low speed uh, maneuvers. Um, I, I was looking it up the other day. It enables something like a, I want to call it like the Pugachev Cobra maneuver is something they may have shown in like Top Gun 2 when, you know, they're like, holy crap, what the hell is that? Um, that type of stuff. So Damn. I know Damn. someone's got to check me and it's going to be some other maneuver, but... <laughs> Like, <laughs> you know, the internet will yeah, sort it out. Yeah, 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 the internet will sort it out. So is this how it is this how it launches? Yeah. So it launches uh, from this position, and it also recovers from this position. Um, one of the things we had. Uh, so the LRV is also really cool. Um, it's got this called a blast shield. Um, but one of the things that they were discovering with F-35 when it was taking off from aircraft carriers, because they have a uh, a uh, vertical takeoff or short takeoff uh, launch and land, but the engine was burning holes into uh, the flight deck. Um, and so that was just like a massive problem with the aircraft. This meant to uh, deflect, you know, when we go after burner on it and, and just the heat that's being generated from the engine um, when we're taking off or and when we're landing. So, um, but yeah, it launches, lands like a SpaceX rocket. Again, our our head of aircraft, Armour Harris, I feel like he was just built for developing this aircraft, but worked uh, as a principal engineer on the Falcon 9 launch and land, and then was doing Starlink, Star Shield, uh, working with Elon, um, and just wanted to work on the air layer and build uh, next generation aircraft. So. Yeah, Pretty that cool. is amazing. Yep. What is that hole in the front? Uh, so that's the intake up there. Um, so air intake for the engine. Um, and yeah, that, that's what it is. Right on, right on. <laughs> yeah, not much more to it. Where do the where do all the weaponry? Did it, where so you've got weaponry? internal and hard points on the on the other sides of the wings. There, um, those are uh, the weapons bay for it. Again, um, carrying basically. Any weapon, any you can carry 
uh, lorasms, long-range anti-ship missiles. Uh, you can carry air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground missiles. You can carry bombs. Um, again, very much think of it as like a, you know, the same thing that you would find on a fighter aircraft uh, in terms of its weapon payload. The unique thing and like one of the differentiating things uh, about this besides being vertical takeoff, launch, and land, but if I were to compare it to like some of the other new CCA capabilities that you're seeing built, those aircraft are using business jet engines and so it's, they can't generate the electrical power to run fifth generation, sixth generation sensor suites and electronic attack payloads. Um, and so electronic warfare being a massive aspect of the battlefield today, right? Jamming enemy GPS, jamming enemy communications, um, things that something like the F-18 Growler would be doing, we can also uh, do that mission. And so it's like, look, even you know, if you were to go uh, Winchester on the weapons on this aircraft, you still have your electronic uh, attack abilities, and so you're still playing a role in the fight. You can act wow. as comms relay. Um, yeah, this thing is. Uh, what, what do you mean electronic warfare, like jamming capabilities? Yeah, jamming. Um, jamming uh, GPS, jamming uh, the communications on other uh, enemy platforms. Um, yeah. Wow. One, one of the other cool things, um, so we like to say this thing uh, hauls ass and sips gas, um, right? It can fly for 2,100 nautical miles with full mission payload, but it's flying... Um, cruising at 55,000 feet um, altitude, which is higher than any other like aircraft, like definitely like in its, in its class, right? Um, and why is that important? It actually allows your air-to-air -air missiles, it improves the kinematics on them, which makes for, you know, the easiest way to say it is like longer range weapons. Um, and so now your missiles can actually go further because they're, you know, they're actually, the air is less dense up there. They're able to, they're not, you know, using as much gas when they're being fired. Um, and I don't think a lot of people appreciate, but like in air to air combat, air to air warfare, like what matters is your sensor range. What matters is uh, the range of your missiles. Um, it's not, you know, as, as cool as like dogfighting is, it's not, you know, yeah. within visual range dogfighting anymore. It's, you know, F-35 is amazing because it can see everything before it gets seen um, and it can attack those things. Same thing uh, with this aircraft. Dude, that is cool. Crazy. Yeah, powered by Hivemind, Hivemind being our AI pilot. Um, again, just been working on Hivemind for the, the past 10 years. And so the mission sets, like we were talking about in the studio, being like that library of checked out missions, but um, continue to work on classified, you know, classified level missions for air to air uh, uh, missions, air to ground missions um, for this wow. aircraft. 55,000 feet, yep. 2,100 miles. Yeah. Nautical miles with a payload. How fast does it go? Um, we're cruising, uh, cruising at Mach 0.85. Um, we're expecting that you'll be able to dash supersonic. The problem when you dash supersonic is that your your signature goes up. Uh, people now and um, right, this thing is meant to be uh, pretty pretty low observable in terms of uh, what the enemy's looking for. So. Yeah. And it land it so when it lands, yep. it lands just like this. Lands just like this. Takes off, lands. Don't want to say like, yeah, we took inspiration from you know SpaceX, uh, you know, catching That's the That's crazy. Thing. So yeah. it just it it, yeah. it lands like it goes yep. in reverse and just lands right air, hook yeah. up, ready to roll and again. We've got a lot of experience doing that with the VBAT. And actually, believe it or not, VBAT's a harder thing to launch and land than something like this because like in, in armor will tell you, it's like, look, Falcon 9, you have all the thrust in the world. Um, and like you put that thing wherever you want on the planet, centimeters, like VBAT, and like you have perfect weather conditions. VBAT, you're operating in the worst weather conditions. You don't have a lot of thrust. Um, it's, uh, it's a big challenge. XBAT, you have a, an incredible amount of thrust from a, like a technical challenge aspect. If this is VBAT and this is Falcon 9, you have XBAT like right you know, next to Falcon 9. Damn. Again, that, that multi-plane thrust vectoring allows us to put this thing you know, wherever we need to put it. So, wow. But yeah, no, it's, um, right, it's, I mean, not only, uh, it's, you can now make every ship an aircraft carrier, you can make non-standard vessels, aircraft carriers, right, you can put these things on cargo ships, island chains, it just becomes a really intractable thing for the adversary to track, which, 
can go ev- can everywhere. Go everywhere. Anywhere yeah, and everywhere. Right? We're, in, we're in a field here, right? You go into a forest clearing. We were joking around. You put this thing on, you know, a pickleball court if you want. Like every pickleball <laughs> court in the world is now uh, your runway. So, Damn. Yeah. That is awesome. I mean, could, yeah. you, could you imagine a a drone swarm of these bad boys coming after your ass? Yeah. No, this thing is... Um, no, and that, and that's what look we're we're very much working on the behaviors, the missions of multi-agent expats uh, flying around, augmenting you know fighter pilots, augmenting the mission, um, executing the mission independently. Um, it's it, like I said, I think this for me this is like an inspirational aircraft. I'm like holy crap, this is this is like one of those. It's, this is a cool thing to build. Like I you know. One of those moments. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like if you want to be at the intersection of AI, national security, building cool, you know, jet aircraft, um, Shield AI is, you know, a great place to do it. So no limit, you know, on in terms of the ambition and the imagination here. Yeah. So congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm I'm excited to uh, you know launch this thing on on your show. I think that's like. You know, that's a, that's a cool thing. I know a lot of people uh, watch it. I think it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm, thanks for letting us bring it onto your property. I'm sure your neighbors were like, what the hell is this They're thing? They're worried about it. What's you? Sean yeah. got going on right now? <laughs> They're like, what the like, fuck is going on? Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Wow, man. Congrats. That is, this is the kind of stuff that just makes me proud to be an American. Like, that is the future of aerial warfare. That is yeah, it fundamentally Incredible. will transform air warfare, right? Again, no more. Earth is our runway. Um, AI piloted. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a mean machine that I think to the point of it's, it's going to deter our adversaries by diplomacy another day. So. Yeah, I'll say. I'll say. Wow. Awesome. I want to see a launch. Yeah, yeah, launch. yeah. Well, uh, so right, we'll bring you out to the. Happy to bring you out to the first flight. I think it's only appropriate that dude. I you, would you love come out to that. that. Yeah, so I would love that. Cool. Yep. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. No, thanks, Sean. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous. Please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.